烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. You know, for such a long time, I've been holding back. <laughs> I've been holding back because I could see that the people who were coming to this channel and watching these videos really weren't getting it. You know, they really weren't appreciating where we're coming from and the value of this information. So, what has changed in the recent? Couple of months is that we're starting to get people who get it, and so <laughs> my inspiration, my direction, you know, is coming from Lalita, coming from Goddess, and she's telling me, "Okay, don't hold back anymore." All right, <laughs> so strap on your seatbelt. Here we go. Okay. Why do we do this seva? Am I trying to become some kind of big enlightenment superstar and create some exploitative cult that's going to trap thousands of people into giving me money or some gosh darn thing? No, no way. I am categorically against forming any kind of organization. And the reason for that is, in this time and place, in planet Earth, in Kali Yuga, every organization becomes corrupt. When I made my previous、uh, teaching organization, I tried my best to keep out the corruption. You know, I supported the whole ashram by my trading on the stock market. I took a deposit only, and when we,、uh, when I resigned from being guru, and we decided to close the ashram, I gave everybody their money back. See, but they still betrayed me. They still created a huge scandal. Nobody defended me, and all like this. Why? Because in any organization, you have to have somebody who's a leader. And somebody who's a follower, and the followers become envious. It's just human nature. The leaders become arrogant, and the followers become envious. And of course, that's not going to end well. It's going to end with betrayals. It's going to end with fault finding and revenge and all that nasty stuff. So. Even though my so-called disciples <laughs> decided to take revenge on me for being such a bad guy and not playing the role that I was supposed to play according to the books, <laughs> I never took revenge on them. I never charged them any money, and I never, you know, started to dig dirt on them and post it on the internet. So. My conscience is clean, and when I started this new teaching endeavor, or really, it's just sharing, you know, among friends. I mean, the real value, the real guru, is in the scriptures. We don't need anybody sitting on a big chair giving orders, huh? What do we need that for? Only because you have been conditioned by school to follow orders, you've been conditioned by school to need a teacher. But we also have the answer to that. Check out the Matrix Learning series, and I'll put a link up here. You don't need a teacher. You don't need a leader. You don't need anybody to tell you what to do. And then now people are going to say, "But I have to make a living." <laughs> Look, 
Goddess Lalita is the substance of the universe. One of her names is Mahatva. Uh, Mahat means everything. <laughs> the whole ball of yarn. Huh? So if she is everything, don't you think she could cut a little bit of cash loose for, you know, for your maintenance? Huh? And it's true. If you start doing these pujas, if you start chanting these mantras, if you start studying these books that I have posted on the internet for free, huh? you can download them. You know, some of them I wrote, some of them I found in other places online, but I collated them all and put them on one site so you can go follow one link and just download the whole lot of them on your computer and read them or print them out or whatever you want to do. And by doing this, you will get whatever you need for your maintenance. Now, maybe it's not going to happen overnight, okay? Maybe it's going to require a little work on your side to please her with your service. But she is more than willing. I mean, look, what do really people want? Huh? They want to be happy, isn't it? So what happens when you chant the goddess's name? You get happy, <laughs> especially if you don't have any desire. You know, if your only desire is to please her, <laughs> My God, you won't be able to stand how happy you get. <laughs> You'll have to develop your tolerance, you know, because <laughs> you just get too much happy. But even if you have a desire, even if you want money or a nice home or partner or family or whatever it is you want, she will give that. She will give it in a way that does not deviate you from her service. Now, if you're greedy and you go chasing it like a dog chasing a bone, well, that's your fault. If you fall down, huh, that's your fault. But if you follow this path, huh, this kaula path, you know, from the bottom to the top, we even, we, we uh, have a whole tantric teaching. You want sex life? Well, that's fine, but do it as devotional service to her. Do it in such a way that you purify the lower chakras, you break through the Brahma Granti, and you reach the cave of the heart. I'm telling you if, you, if you do this with the right conception, with the right view, huh? and with the right desire, which is to please her, or even just the curiosity to find out what's there, you know? As long as you don't have any negative desire, she will certainly protect you, support you, grant you your desires, give you everything you want. <laughs> one of our team members, <laughs> one of our team members is a lovely lady who we call Amma <laughs> because she's kind of the, the project mother, you know? And uh, she's a co-founder of a software company. And uh, about two or three years ago, she decided, I'm not going to do this anymore for greed. I'm going to do this only to support my devotional service to the mother goddess. And, and since then, she has become so ecstatic. Huh? Her family, her co-workers, everybody around her thinks that she's a little bit, you know, maybe she kind of lost it. <laughs> but she's so happy now. She's more happy than she's ever been, and certainly much more happy than she would be by chasing money. In fact, she is arranging her affairs so she can withdraw from the business world and do this service full time. And I'm telling you, anybody that gets a taste of this, that's all they're going to want to do. I mean, look, I could be making a lot of money. I have a lot of skills in computers, in stock trading, stuff like that. You know, well, what do I do? I sit around all day. I chant my mantra. I do these videos. I study the books about her. I edit them and publish them, make them available as widely as possible. Why? 
because it gives me so much joy. Huh? And, oh my God, the inner vistas that she reveals and opens up are just, I mean, amazing. To the point where they're like unbelievable. <laughs> Even to me, you know, and I have a lot of experience with this stuff <laughs> Going back to like 1967 when I met my Adi Guru and The first book I got from him was a little pamphlet only I don't know 40 or 50 pages long called easy journey to other planets So I'm like wow, what is this all about? You know, because in, in those days, especially, you know, those were the days of the moon shots, the, uh, the Apollo program. Everybody had going to other planets on their mind, just like today. Everybody wants to go to Mars. Why? I don't know. It's a desert. It's freezing cold. You can't breathe. But everybody thinks it's really cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, easy journey to other planets has a very simple premise that when you leave this body, the thought that is uppermost in your mind becomes the state of being in your next life. And what is the thought that's going to be at the center at the time of death? It is the sum total of all the activities you've done in this life. So if you spent your life being angry and frustrated and nasty and lusty and greedy and attached and all this, that's what's going to come up. And you're going to go down to the animal species because that's the way they are. That's their state of being. But a human being is capable of so much more than this. Human beings are capable of love, generosity, care, compassion, working to uplift others, huh? working to make the world a better place, following the instructions of the scriptures, developing love of God, developing knowledge of the absolute, Huh? This is what human life is for. And if you do this, what's going to be in your mind at the time of death is all of your pious activities over your whole life. The net result of those is going to be an impression of a higher state of being beyond this human life. And so that's where you're going to go in the next life. So basically, there's a system in the Vedic scriptures of you decide where you want to go in the next life, and then you worship the deity of that world. Like if you want to go to heaven, worship Indra. Huh? If you want to go to the planets of the sages, beyond that, worship Brahma. Huh? If you want to go even higher than that, you worship Ganapati or Shiva or the Universal Mother. Uh, and she will allow you to go anywhere. Huh? You could go any planet you want. Huh? You could be like Narada Muni. You know, Narada Muni, he's got his vena over his shoulder and he's chanting these mantras and whatever mantra he chants, he'll go to that world. That's a pretty cool job. <laughs> You could be like that. Huh? I want to be like that. That would be cool, wouldn't it? So you can, by means of cultivating devotion to the Universal Mother, I mean, she'll give you the keys to the T-bird, you know? She'll give you, she'll give you, open the doors to any world that you want to go to. And I just want to be with her because she's such a wonderful being. You know, and I can tell you that if you invite her in, I mean, she's already in, right? She's the Kundalini. <laughs> Let's put it this way. If you cultivate your awareness of her, she will reveal so many wonderful things that you, will, you can't imagine how you ever made do without it. 
How did you ever get through life without this beautiful relationship in the world within? Huh? The ritual worship, the sacrifices, you've seen me do some of the rituals here on this channel and stuff like that. You know, the different principles like, like wearing Tripundra Basma and, and all of these things, right? These are external spiritual activities. But the real thing is the internal spiritual cultivation, which happens as a result, a spontaneous, natural consequence of doing the external activities. So that's why we begin from Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga naturally matures into Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga naturally matures into Raja Yoga and meditation. And meditation automatically leads to realization. It's just a matter of time, how much effort you put in, uh, how clear your view is, Right? And ultimately, your dedication and faith. So please, take this knowledge, huh? put it into use, apply it in your life, and get the benefits. I mean, it's free. <laughs> it requires a little work, but nothing like material life, which is only disappointing. It's never what you expect it to be. It's always some kind of suffering, some kind of, you know, uh, disappointment. It never meets your expectations, and it's never what you really want. So why don't you get what you really want instead? That's the result of this Sri Vidya path. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. <laughs>